Looking now at the markets in Kenya, where we know that those elections and uh, the result of those elections coming through at the weekend, indeed, showing that uh, Uhuru Kenyatta is the new president of Kenya. We've got that mar market uh, unsurprisingly up a very strong 3% on the day, 4,796. Remember, this is the first day of trading after the confirmation of those results, which came in at the weekend, that Uhuru Kenyatta is the new president of uh, the Republic of Kenya. Let's look now on the currency front and see how the currency is doing and surprisingly as well stronger by three almost three quarters of a percent 85.45 against the US dollar long dollar positions giving way after Kenyans largely behaved but let's see how long that piece will hold we we'll certainly hope that it will be holding and it will be sustained let's now see if we can join our studios in Nairobi where you can get an update on the Kenyan markets and we've got Kenneth Minjira is fixed income analyst at uh, Stanley Kenneth thanks for your time You'd imagine, of course, the fascination Thank today you. with most people is to see how Kenyan equities are trading as well as, of course, particularly the shilling. And we do see that shilling stronger on the day. We also see equities stronger on the day. Are you surprised? Um, no, not particularly. Um, but as you've mentioned, the market performed quite well today, up 137 points uh, which is really strong and uh, no, I'm not quite surprised uh, I think probably what might uh, we might not have expected was such a uh, strong showing from uh, retail investors they actually contributed quite a bit to to the rally we saw today which um, usually is a bit worrying in some circles uh, that that we didn't expect retailers to be so strong in the market but institution local institutional and investors also came in quite strongly taking up positions on a lot of the counters so um, I think we'll watch the market going forward. Absolutely. I think we're all going to be watching that market. We do know that last week volumes were down, though the market was stronger. And we're going to have another conversation with another guest in the studio about the performance of that market. But just going back to those elections, I'm surprised by the gains here, particularly given the margin of victory. I mean, we're talking 0.7 percentage points difference between the two candidates, which in any part of the world I would imagine would be uh, straightforward, straight away mean a challenge from uh, the losing contender. We saw it happen in the U.S. We've seen it happen in other parts of the of the world. Are you surprised by these gains, particularly given that narrow margin of victory? Um, no, not particularly. Uh, if you if we were you were keeping track of the um, poll poll results before elections, I think um, there was a survey that was done actually about uh, five days before the elections. It pulled the two main contenders quite close. I mean, there was a difference of very few percentage points between the two. I think an average of about um, 43.8 and 44.4% on average across all the surveys. So um, the close gap between the two was not expected. And as, if you, as you've mentioned, um, what, like, what happens in such circumstances, what is most likely to happen is that um, there's always a petition or a contention, uh, and that's what we've seen happen locally. As I think you know, it's been in the news that um, the losing side will be going to court. Um, we'll, we'll wait and see what, uh, what will come from this, but we know that um, the Supreme Court should come back with a judgment within 14 days mm. after the election, so it will be pretty soon. And um, I think a lot of them, are also if you look at the markets, a lot of people will also be watching to see what, uh, what, what, what will come from the Supreme Court. I think it could go either of two ways. We could probably have um, another runoff election, probably between the two presidential candidates, or um, the election results could be upheld by the court, which would, meet, which would be quite positive for our markets. Absolutely, I'd imagine for everybody who's African as well, because it would demonstrate that Kenya is a mature democracy. Let's talk about where to make money in the Kenyan market even now as we wait for finalization and the conclusion of that election. What would you be looking at? Would you look at equities? Would you look at fixed income? I know you're a fixed income guy, so perhaps uh, you would tend more towards being cautious. Um, probably, I think in the equity market, I would actually take quite a cautious view. Um, what was, I mean, the prices we're seeing, we're seeing two-year highs on some of the counters. Um, prob the market did, uh, prob um, a lot of the counters did about almost 10% uh, rise uh, today, which is more or less near the cap put by uh, the CMA on uh, mm. the movement in price in a day. So I would be quite cautious going forward. Also, I would be watching, as I mentioned, um, what comes from um, what the, the case we're expecting in the Supreme Court. On the fixed income side, I think the returns are quite attractive. Um, if you're looking at one year, one year T bills at levels of 12.5% uh, uh, and above, mm. that's actually a positive, uh, re a real return 
um, compared to where the inflation numbers are. So what I probably would do, take quite um, some positions on the shorter end of the yield curve, which is quite safe. And on, uh, on the 91 day, on the 182 day, also we are seeing um, some good numbers on uh, the repo. So um, I think I would actually look, be looking at this, uh, the shorter end of the yield curve in anticipation of um, where the equity market will go. Act the sentiment for the equity market for 2013 is quite positive. Yeah. Of course, um, so based on, uh, based on what we expect over the next two to three weeks, we'll determine um, uh, what we'll do probably moving into the second quarter yeah. of the year. Correct me if I'm wrong here, Kenneth, but I'm noting that you are concentrating your activity around the shorter end of the market, suggesting that you're not taking a longer term uh, look at the Kenyan market and believing that that stability will continue. Am I getting this wrong? Um, no, no, you're not. Actually, I think um, I'd be very cautious on the longer end of the yield curve mm -hmm. uh, based on um, the devolved government, the new system of government that we expect in financial year 2013, 2014, and also the new borrowing target for this financial year. Um, I think um, cumulatively, um, Treasury had borrowed about 105 billion by the close of 20, 2012. Yeah. But if you take into account the new borrowing target, where we actually stand at about 75 billion also with the heavy redemptions we've seen in the first quarter so this is also um, this may place a bit of pressure on on the yield on um, on the interest rates so I think um, uh, yes and also the uncertainty of uh, the new system of government in the mm. second half of 2013 this would limit me to be to the short to medium term yeah, thanks, Kenneth. Uh, finally, before I let you go now, we had a story today from Reuters suggesting that Kenya plans to issue a billion dollar uh, sovereign uh, bond uh, following uh, on these elections that were largely peaceful. Now, if I remember last year, after Zambia went to the market for the first time, there was huge demand. I mean, there was a fascinating story told about how yields moved on that uh, Zambian offering initially. And then as, as, as the day progressed, it was absolutely amazing to see the level of interest that was being exhibited for towards uh, African assets. Now, in Kenya's case, an election has just come on a, uh, a constitution that many people have lauded and is very, very strong indeed. What kind of demand do you anticipate, perhaps from uh, foreign investors looking at Kenya and looking at Africa in general? Um, I think Kenya being one of the main um, frontier markets in sub-Saharan Africa, we would expect um, huge amounts of uh, interest in, uh, so in sovereign debt issued by, by our government. Mm. Um, and also looking at the Kenyan economy, which is a lot more attractive than, um, relatively speaking, to probably the Zambian economy. Mm. So we would expect a lot of interest in any sovereign debt issued by our country and also the peaceful elections we've just had. And if the case is, so, um, if everything goes well and um, we get, uh, and everything is sorted out, we get a new president sworn in. Um, which I, I expect is what Treasury was waiting for. Mm. And our risk, or the risk appetite from foreign funds we've seen it for um, sub assets in frontier markets has grown in leaps and bounds. Mm. And we'd expect a lot, of, um, a lot of interest to be shown in the sovereign debt.